Second really big thing that I'm learning right now and taking courses on is the elk stack. A second part of that is that a lot of times companies don't care so much about what you know. I've heard about it faintly from like YouTube videos, but I never learned about it in school. Hello everybody, welcome and or welcome back to my channel. So I actually filmed this video once today, but the audio was so bad and I wasn't about to do this to y'all. So this is round two, maybe it's a good thing. Uh, the first video was definitely 20 minutes long, so hopefully I can summarize a little bit better this time around. I made a video not too long ago about my internship where I kind of deep dive into how I got it and what I did last summer. Um, last summer I got to intern as a digital product manager and it was more so on the business side of things rather than on like the technical like hands-on side of things so I ended up not pursuing that internship again and reapplying for a cybersecurity internship which is what I'm doing right now. I'm really really excited to be in this area. I'm doing internal risk. There's tons of new tools. There's tons that I'm learning. Also this is a virtual internship which is unique in itself. So I'm going to kind of do again just a brief overview over what I'm going to be doing this summer. I'm going to talk about some of the things that I'm learning and then I also asked you guys on the community tab and on Instagram if you had any questions for me. So I will lastly be covering some of those questions. So a brief overview. Again, I kind of mentioned it already, but I'm finally in internal risk, which I'm super, super excited about. You're probably going to hear me say that I'm super excited about this a thousand more times because I've always wanted to be in cybersecurity. Obviously, that's why I got a degree in it. And I was really disheartened last summer when my internship wasn't as technical as I thought it would be. Um, and I think that was a really good lesson though because that's what internships are for. You're supposed to intern to interview the company as they interview you and make sure that it's a good fit for you um, the same way that they're making sure that you're a good fit for them. So again, last summer I was kind of more so on the business side. I was doing a lot more meetings with like um, a lot of administrative things, but then I would also go and like help with the team that was managing the programmers, which was really, really cool to see. Um, they worked in agile like scrum teams, so it's just like a way of doing um, software development. And it was really interesting to see that side of the business, and I think it's going to help me a lot this summer because now I'm kind of like on the other side of that as like a business customer who needs like the programmers to do things for me versus like being on the programmer side and like seeing all the other people. Like I said earlier, I'm doing internal risk, so it has a lot to do with just making sure that what's happening inside the company is like compliant and that, um, like I said, no information is being sent out that shouldn't be getting sent out or it's not being sent to the wrong people if it is being sent out and that there's no employees that have like any malicious intent that are like snooping around in databases that they have no business being in. There are some access controls of course that play a huge role in that but I'm actually not working on access control. I'm more so working on like the monitoring and auditing of all of that information and how we can get a clean way of getting all that information um, put together. So that's pretty much it for the overview. Again, it's only been like a week and a half, so I don't have too much information just yet, but I'll continue to give updates, um, especially since this one's virtual this time around. I think it's really interesting to see how things are gonna be different from last summer. So yeah, that is the general overview as to what I'm doing this summer. What I am learning. So I am learning so many new things. I honestly have so much to learn. I'll probably spend some time doing it today. Not because I have to, but because I'm just genuinely curious and excited to learn about these new technologies. Uh, Splunk is a really big tool used for analytics in cybersecurity, and I've actually never used it before. Uh, I don't think anybody's ever talked to me at school about it. Um, I really found out about it through some of my favorite Instagram accounts. Um, Taylor, her name is digital empress on YouTube and on Instagram. She just recently did her Splunk certification. Um, they are free, I believe, that's what she told me. So if you would like to learn more about it, I would definitely recommend checking it out. If I find anything, I'll make sure to link it down below. It's a really big tool used in cybersecurity. It's very common, but unfortunately I didn't learn anything about it yet and I'm about to graduate. I only have like a semester left in like one summer class. So I feel like I would have probably learned about it by now, but I could be wrong. Um, I'd be really curious if there's any other cybersecurity students um, watching if you learned about Splunk during your time in college or if it's just just me that didn't. But anyways, we're going to be using Splunk with tons of other technologies which I'll cover in later videos because again, I'm still learning about them. 
And a second really big thing that I'm learning right now and taking courses on is the Elk Stack, which is Elastic Surge in Kirbana, which I'm really, really excited about. Again, I, I've heard about it faintly from like YouTube videos, but I never learned about it in school and I never really had a reason to explore it on my own just because I didn't really know what to do with it. And a lot of these tools are like built for enterprise like level analytics and you don't really need that if you're just like sitting at home like watching network traffic like I'm sure there's a way to implement it but I just didn't really know how to go about it so hopefully I can find some ways to show you guys how to play around with it in the time being I do believe some of those are probably paid for I know I think Elasticsearch is open source but um, if there's any way I can show you guys or teach you guys something about it I'll definitely make sure to do that just to help you guys out I brought my iPad because I do have a couple of notes that I've been taking again super entry level super base level knowledge I'm just now learning about these things but I thought it would be cool for me to kind of give you a brief overview of what the elk stack is so elk stack again like I said it stands for Elasticsearch in Kirbana and what that is is um, auto completion it does relevant searching it can do synonyms a query it can analyze structured data um, it can analyze application logs and system metrics, which is what we are using it for. APM, so application performance management is another big thing. Server monitoring. There's tons of really, really cool things that this um, technology can do. I don't really know what to refer to it as. Again, I'm still very, very new, but I am very excited to learn about it and to share it with you all. The Elk Stack is comprised of several different programs, so I'll just briefly touch on those for context. So. There's the XPAC, and that has to do with security, authentication, authorization, and it can even connect to an LDAP server, which hopefully soon I'll be doing a video with somebody that I actually went to school with, and we'll be talking about how we built our LDAP servers for our operating systems class, and that should be a really interesting video and like a fun two-part tutorial. Uh, you can see two different approaches to the same problem. Anyways, XPAC also does monitoring, alerting, reporting, machine learning. It can graph things. It helps the search feature determine what is popular versus what is relevant because those are two very different things. They said a really cool statement and it's that we're searching for uncommonly common connections because that is what is relevant. It's the things that you don't really expect but have value to the user. Anyways, moving on, there is Kirbana, uh, which is analytics, data visualization, again, authentication, authorization, and they also have dashboards. Um, it uses SQL, which is really, really cool, or SQL, which is exciting because I just learned SQL this past semester, so took that class at the perfect time. Uh, Beats is another part of that stack, and what Beats is are data shippers, so they go out to different programs and collect data, and there's different Beats for different applications, so different data shippers for different applications. And then lastly, there's also Logstash, which processes logs. It's a data processing pipeline. It can take in data from CSV files, XML, JSON, and then it exports that data to what is referred to as a stash. It does data enrichment, so it just gives the data that it's collecting a little bit more value so that we're not just looking at like numbers. We can actually see like, oh look, like there's a trend going on here. So I believe the main point of this entire stack is to let analysts do what analysts do best and analyze the data and not uh, spend so much time trying to interpret and find a way to find connections. Um, this application kind of like does it for you. At least that's my interpretation. I know that there's a lot of cybersecurity professionals that have been commenting on my videos, so if you use these technologies, I would love to hear what you use them for. Or if you have any insight um, on these technologies or how they play a role just in your day-to-day -day life especially Splunk because I know Splunk can be used for so many different things. I think we have a lot of college students here that watch my videos so any advice at all is appreciated when it comes to cybersecurity and all these fun new technologies that I think all of us are still learning and getting used to. So those are the two main things that I am learning and then again there's other applications that I'm not going to touch on right now because it's still I'm still learning a lot about them and trying to figure out where they piece together. I will have some pretty like general tutorials on like Elk Stack and hopefully Splunk coming very very soon so I can help you guys out in learning those applications because again I didn't learn that in college which I wonder if I should have. I wonder if it's like bad or if this is normal to just learn these things at an internship. I don't know. That's going to be my second question. If you are a cybersecurity college student, did you learn about Splunk and Elk Stack while you were in school? I'd be interested to know.
All right, and for the last part of this video, I wanna go over some of the questions that I asked. So I made a community post on YouTube and I got a few questions there, and I also did it on Instagram. So if you wanna follow me on Instagram, it's at Rebecca J. Richard. I post on my stories pretty much daily and I love DMing you guys. Um, and I normally ask a lot of questions for videos. If you ever wanna be a part of that, I'll more than likely be asking on my community tab or on Instagram. So I'm gonna start with the YouTube questions. So for YouTube questions, I had two that kind of had the same theme. Um, it said, how hard was it to get your internship? Also, did you have any experience before doing your internship? Like, did you have any certifications such as Security Plus or Network Plus? I kind of had experience. Um, I definitely took a network security class in my degree plan. And then I also took um, a class that was basically the Security Plus class just I don't have the certification for it but that's like the last thing I need to do is actually take the test but I basically took the course for it so I guess you could say I definitely had experience but um, no official certifications that helped me get this internship or anything you'll probably hear me say this a ton of times in the next few questions that I'm answering but it was really just networking I was at the company that I wanted to, that I'm still interning at right now last summer and I really didn't enjoy my role which was like a hard pill for me to swallow because I just assumed that my internship would be perfect and that I would love my job right away and also I have really bad imposter syndrome which keeps me from reaching out a lot of times last summer I really tried to push that behind me and I reached out to the cybersecurity interns as soon as I found out that they existed. I was like, hey, who's your manager? I set up a one-on-one -on -one with that manager and I just tried to communicate and contact as many people as possible. LinkedIn is always a great resource, but I wanna say that I really got this internship through networking because again, real bad imposter syndrome. So I feel like I'm underqualified for this role, but I think a second part of that is that a lot of times companies don't care so much about what you know. Obviously some skills are required and you need to have some base knowledge, but it's also really important that you can communicate with people well and that you can hold a conversation, you can handle conflict because it doesn't matter how great you are at programming or scripting if you can't like look somebody in the eye and give them feedback. You know, I think that's much more important. I think anybody can learn these technologies, but people skills are a little bit harder to come by. Another question I got was, how close is your internship to the work and assignments and projects you did in university? Is it similar or very different? So I kind of already answered this question, but I didn't learn a lot of the things that I needed to know for my internship at school. I'm definitely learning so many new things and so many new technologies, and I'm really grateful that they're actually giving me the space to like take these courses and learn and then like apply and have hands-on experience. I think it's so, so valuable. I think that a lot of our labs, I'm not gonna say that they were easy, but they were definitely guided. So uh, my operating systems class was probably the first class where it was really just like, go figure it out, which I think is the best way to learn. Obviously I learned things like SQL, which is gonna be helpful. And then like different protocols that are important in this whole process. But other than that, there weren't any I can't say that like my university like especially prepared me for this like again base level knowledge but as far as what I'm working on this summer I didn't learn any of that in school. Moving on over to Instagram someone asked me what are your tasks assigned to you given that this is your first internship in cybersecurity and I'm gonna be honest like I don't think that they really went light on me. One thing that I really like about the company that I'm at is that they give you meaningful work they never just want to give you like throw away work or um, you know, like the stereotypical like intern work where it's just uh, kind of like time consuming, but you're not really doing anything. I'm definitely working on something that I would be working on if I got hired there full time, which is really exciting. Um, but again, I'm working on um, analyzing logs and finding a way to bring all of that data together, package it up nicely so that somebody else can analyze it is basically what I'm doing this summer. And I'll have a little bit more information and I'll see what I'm actually allowed to share, but that's kind of what I'm doing this summer. And then again, somebody asked me if I had any practice in bash scripting, Python, OSCP, CEH, MCSA, and just what I needed to know to get this internship. And I know this will probably be shocking to some of y'all, but I didn't have to know any of those things. Obviously they assume that you like know some base knowledge because you're obviously at least for my company, they're recruiting from a university so they know that we have some prior knowledge and like some experience, but I think a really big part of this is understanding that they don't expect you to know tons of things uh, given that this is like your first internship or that you are just still in college. Um, they've 
most people that work there they've been in your shoes a lot of people have probably interned for the same company so they understand that you don't know everything um, again I have some experience in bash scripting um, just because of my school and again I kind of have like network plus security plus knowledge but I don't have the actual certification so um, there wasn't really too much like prior knowledge requirements I think a lot of it was mainly about like my people skills my ability to talk to other people and um, they asked me a lot about conflict resolution in my interview and things like that but um, there was very little on the actual skills which is which is funny because Apple did the same thing they were like anybody can learn the technologies but people skills is hard to like it's hard to teach that you can't um, just learn people skills obviously you can work on it and grow but it's it's way more important and you can network yourself much further than you can like get yourself by just learning tons of things if that makes sense um, networking is definitely a lot more valuable I think in the real world than actual knowledge that sounds so bad but I think I hope I'm communicating that in a way that makes sense um, of course it's important to learn things but your people skills are so 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 important make sure you don't neglect those I'm condensing a lot of these questions because they follow the same theme, but the last one was just how did you get one? Again, I kind of explained that in the beginning of this video. I ended up reaching out to a cybersecurity intern and asking who recruited them and who their manager was and just setting up one-on-ones and then asking people if they could give me tours while I was at the company. Um, I would highly recommend reaching out, not reaching out, but checking out my last video on my internship because I kind of go a little bit further about my journey into cybersecurity or how I got to this role right here because again it was really disheartening for me I definitely thought that my first internship would be my dream job and that it was just gonna work out perfectly but it didn't do that for me I ended up having to try a little bit harder to find the role that I wanted but it ended up working out and again I guess I'm still in the beginnings so things can still change but I'm just really grateful to be in cybersecurity and to finally get like hands-on industry experience on these tools that I've only ever heard about. Yeah, I'm just really, really excited. Again, for the 8,000th time. <laughs> All right, y'all, that is gonna be it for this video. I hope that you guys got some useful information out of it or I gave you guys a little bit of insight into what I'm doing. I'll definitely be making more content just because this is a virtual internship and it's very, very different compared to last year. I definitely have some tips about working from home now that I've experienced what it's like to work 40 hours right here in my room. <laughs> if you don't already, make sure to follow me on Instagram at Rebecca J. Richard. I spend tons of time on my Instagram. I'm on my stories pretty much every day and I love interacting with you guys on my DMs. And also, if you want to, feel free to join the family. Like, comment, subscribe, all of those fun things. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Until next time, bye.